Another one, thank you. Y'all don't run over time is I got the black bean neck on. What is going on, you all? We have got to start a list of all of these men who are now apologizing to Megan Thee Stallion after everything that has happened when they could have just kept their beef suckers closed from the very, very beginning. Carl Crawford, the former um, you know, head of 1501, is now coming out offering an apology to Megan Thee Stallion. And you know, I wouldn't necessarily call it an apology. He's just really trying to re restructure and rebrand. He is now installing somebody else to be the head of 1501 Entertainment. And like now, he is in the beginning stage of cleaning up the brand. Like under new management situation, like the same trash apartment, we're just gonna throw some paint and we're gonna rename it. Uh, but we still gonna do the same effed up stuff, still have the effed up staff and, and still be crap. Like it's just, it's just not giving. Also trying to blame his inexperience of working in the music industry, like him not knowing, just him just being a baseball like player, like he, a former baseball player, like is the reason why he didn't understand all of this. Like, no, what was clearly understandable for all of us is that you are a misogynist and you were like completely losing it because Megan Thee Stallion really tried to negotiate. She tried to renegotiate her contract with you all and y'all just started to go completely off rails. Like y'all thought y'all was gonna win this. That's what's 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 fascinating about this is patriarchy is so strong. It is so strong that these men, even though they knew they were wrong, they knew they was wrong. By definition, they knew they was wrong, but they thought that they would be able to win. They thought because they're used to winning in situations like this. Like, and men still do win in situations like this. But they just really believed that like they were going to like win not just this case, but this whole defamation that was going on towards Megan the Stallion. Like they thought that half of the internet and stuff was going to side with them. They thought they was gonna win like support over. Like even with the Erica Banks situation and all of that, like, and I hate that Erica Banks even got involved in that because she's talented in her own right, but you know, having her trying to go beef it with Megan the Stallion just didn't make any sense. And Megan even said, like, hey, girl, like, she even referenced this stuff in her music. She saw, like, in the, like the head campaign ain't working. Like, like it ain't, it, it's not working. Like, Megan the Stallion is still winning, and I'm so glad she is on a social media break. I miss her. I miss seeing the H-Town hottie. Like, I miss her so much. I hope she comes back with a song. I hope she comes back with something sickening. And I don't know. I don't think Megan Thee Stallion has to do any interviews and talk about any of this mess. If she doesn't want to, she doesn't have to. But I am, like, so glad to see these men, like, now grovel and having to explain themselves and, like, literally not knowing how to get themselves out of this foolishness when they could have just shut up from the beginning. And everybody was telling them to shut up from the beginning. Like, he was trying to sabotage Megan's career. He was trying to, and he ended up sabotaging his. Like, nobody's gonna take Carl Crawford serious like that. He don't wanna leave from being the head honcho. Like, now he, he can't be the face anymore because he's hurt the brand and the image so bad that now everybody associates 1501 with this Megan Thee Stallion foolishness. Like how they treated her. There was no need for you as a business person to be out here dragging a former artist. All of that stuff should have been handled in court, but that's what was going on. Like you had Carl Crawford was saying different stuff than was being said in court. And that's how they do that. That's how they do that. Like they'll talk that mess, but they're not bringing this mess in the courthouse. So it seems as though Megan Thee Stallion like, is no longer signed with 1501. That's what it's looking like. 1501 certified entertainment honcho Carl Crawford is admitting errors in dealing with Megan Thee Stallion once all fences mended going forward, but says they haven't spoken since 2019. Girl, like, <laughs> like, I'm not surprised. Like, you can, you can just tell that there is something, like something happened because TMZ Hip Hop sat down with Carl and his newly installed 1501 president, Kai Verse Tyler, as their label enters a new chapter without the H-Town hottie. That is sounding as if like, girl, 
Megan ain't making no more music with y'all. Like, she is not signed with y'all. Like, that stuff is done. It's over, done with it. Come on, ja uh, Dr. Jackie. Like, over, done with it. So, it sounds like that Carl Crawford probably lost the case or whatever with Megan Thee Stallion because they were trying to say that her last album, something for the hotties, wasn't an album or whatever. And they was trying to act like she needs, like, another one. And they like, girl, no, like, that's an album, whatever. Like, girl, and now she's done with her contract or whatever. Um, and now 1501 has to now move uh, in a new direction without Megan the Stallion. Like, they were literally, tr like, she built this, like, thing. Like, I've never even heard of 1501. It doesn't mean that they don't have stuff, but it's just like, I've heard of them because of Megan the Stallion. So, like, she was growing with them, and I just think it's just messed up because they could have had a better relationship. But Carl Crawford, like, money, like, we see this time and time again. Like, he was just being greedy. She tried to renegotiate her stuff. Like, hey, girl, we need to renegotiate our stuff because things have changed up. Like, and, like, it is what it is. Like, she tried to. And they just didn't want to. Like, can you imagine, like, you had her sign, and now she don't even talk to you no more. It's not even a situation where, you know, she's moved on, she's doing other stuff, and y'all still, like, cordial. But she's had to, like, get lawyers stuff to get out of this contract because y'all tried to F her over like, girl, like, who would want to sign with y'all? The only people who just, like, really just struggling will sign with y'all now. Like, the folks who just, you know, like, y'all can... It, it's really ridiculous. So, um, you know, apparently they move into a new direction. Uh, and they say that Erica Banks has, a, a, like, a, a banger coming out with uh, Kalani or whatever. We'll see. But this is a piss-poor apology. This don't really explain uh, anything. I think Carl Crawford should just admit it and say, hey, you know what? I got out of line, and as a man, I should have never been, like, doing anything. I should have just kept it strictly business. Like, you don't have to, to be in the music industry to understand not to do the stuff that you did. I'm not in the music industry, and I understood that you, like, drama and stuff, that should have been kept in, in the court. Like, you were trying to embarrass her. Like, you was taking your public platform that was supposed to be for promoting and keeping the brand image whatever, y'all was using that to attack her. Like, y'all was doing stuff. You tried to have, tried to say you had an association with Tory Lanez and all this other stuff. Like, it was just a mess. Then you was attacking Rock Nation, trying to say that, you know, they was putting, like, ear, like, stuff in her ear and all the other stuff. When it come to find out, you were just insecure because you knew that y'all were probably nothing without Megan Thee Stallion. Like, y'all knew that. Like, Megan was talking about these folks and just saying, like, she wasn't responding until they were saying something. And she just said that Carl Crawford was lying. Like, Carl Crawford repeatedly called her a liar. Like, it was so bad that she had to get a restraining order against the label. Like, like it's... Like, he was threatening her. Like, doing all... Like, y'all was out here threatening this girl. Y'all was out here harassing her. Like, I, I just... I, like, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling how, like, the disrespect and stuff that y'all was giving this woman. Like, the disrespect that y'all was giving this woman. And now it's like, now that the dust has settled, like, it's, we was right. Like, Megan Thee Stallion has been through so much in the last couple of years. Like, this whole thing, like, she spoke to Carl Crawford since 2019. And then the situation with Tory Lanez happened in 2020, like... No wonder she's not on social media. Like, then she got to defend... Homegirl with the pink wig because she keeps seeking, like, sending her, sticking her fans out on her and making comments about her and new songs and stuff. Like, it's just so disgusting. It's just really ridiculous. And I hope that Megan is surrounded by nothing but love. And we stand with Megan completely. Um, right now, um, Tory Lanez had a court date today, on um, a sentencing. But he did not get sentenced today. They're saying that um, the court date, I think, is supposed to be rescheduled for March. Let me go see. So, yeah, his sentencing has been rescheduled or pushed back to April at the earliest. Um, he was supposed to be um, sentenced today, but we all knew that it was probably, like, not going to happen. Um, you know, apparently his lawyers and stuff need more time. Um, and they're trying to argue, like, they said somebody was in the courthouse hollering saying, well, his lawyers was messed up, like, they wasn't doing their job right, but it's like, girl, no lawyer would have been able to say this, like, it's just like, girl, the facts were just clearly stacked against him, so the new sentence today is, is April the 10th, um, and what is like, ooh, that's like a month or so from, night, from like, right now, uh, and I'm curious to see how long he's going to spend in jail. Like they said, Tory Lanez, whose real name is Daystar Peterson, faces up to 22 years and eight months in prison. He has remained in jail since his conviction. Now, I...
think I think he might do a year or two. I don't know. I just talked to some folks who look at this case and see what is the sentence. I don't think he's gonna be in there no 22 years, but I do think he's gonna be in there a, a, a minute uh, because like and and, and they, sh I, mean, they, they mm, I don't know. I feel like he needs to be in there for a minute because that that harassment for years like it's just it's terrible. Like they were harassing that woman. Like, Tory, like, and his fan base was harassing this woman repeatedly. Like, oh my gosh. And then this whole thing with Carl Crawford. It's just like, y'all are some disgust. And all of these are men. All of these are men. All men in positions of power. Like, and harassment. Like, harassment. Like, what does that say? Like, what does that say? If Megan Thee Stallion is a superstar and as talented as she is and with the, the resources that she has, like, it's... I like has to experience stuff like that. What does it say about all the other like black women that work in these jobs and stuff that are harassed and all the other stuff? Like that's why we should believe them. Um, should believe them from the very beginning. Like period. Um, that's all I got. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about the whole thing in the comments, girl. And I'll talk y'all later. Bye.